Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about something that uh, I wasn't sure how I would approach this, but I think the angle I'm going to go at it with is uh, 16 games that I would generally rather play the digital versions of instead of the tabletop version. So these are tabletop, uh, digital ports of tabletop games, where I think the digital ports do something, uh, maybe not everything, but something that makes the experience a little bit better than the tabletop game, the tabletop version. And for the vast majority of these, these are also games that I would gladly play on the tabletop. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the, the best way I can put it. it. This is not a slight at all to the tabletop versions of the, the vast majority of these games. Um, these are in really no particular order. And I should say, and this is a weird thing to say, but I gotta put it, make it very clear and transparent up front. I have not played the digital versions of all of these games. Um, this list is uh, cultivated by uh, kind of crowdsource, basically, based on some ideas uh, that people had about certain things that, that make these games just easier to play on, on, the, on the digital version. So the way I approached this list was I must have, have either played these games on the tabletop or the digital version or both. Um, so if you want to discount this entire video because I haven't played all these games digitally, I completely understand that. No hard feelings. Um, if I were myself, I, I, or I am myself, if I were you, I would, uh, I would uh, perhaps expect me to play all these digital games, but I don't have time to do that. And I've only played some of these uh, digitally. I, I did go out of my way to play a few of them. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's jump into the list. Let's start out with... Uh, I don't know. These are really in no, no particular order. One of the recent, most recent ones I played was Lord of the Rings. That Lord of the Rings LCG. I played the, the digital version of it a couple times. Uh, we played through the first campaign this past weekend in the digital version. This is one of the games on this list that I have not played the tabletop version. However, uh, I could see that uh, the, the tabletop version, I've heard great things about it from people. Um, and I've heard that even the digital version is a little bit different than the tabletop version. But the digital version was really, really nice in, in the way that it kept track of a lot of different information. It kept track of triggers. So certain things would trigger at different times during upkeep or when you play a card, when you don't play a card. And uh, having the, the digital app keep track of those things is really helpful. So um, the, the idea of, of uh, abilities triggering at different times was really helpful in the app. Um, also, having uh, letting the digital app calculate uh, a, de a decrease in health for various units, um, or even temporary boosts in, uh, in uh, attack or defense uh, was really, really helpful. I'm guessing in the tabletop version, this is done with tokens, uh, which is fine, but it can get really fiddly when you have like seven, seven characters on the table and all of them have certain tokens on each other. Um, I can see that being a little fiddly. And also with the Lord of the Rings LCG, I love that the AI is managed by the app. It's a cooperative game. Uh, we played two player against Sauron, um, and it was nice to just have the app run the bad guy instead of having players have to run the bad guy. Uh, so for all those reasons, I, uh, I am guessing that, uh, that I would enjoy the digital version of, this, of Lord of the Rings LCG more than the tabletop version. But again, it's a guess. Your opinion can, can be different. I totally respect that. Uh, Star Realms. Star Realms is a weird one because I really do enjoy Star Realms on the tabletop. Uh, but I got into Star Realms um, after playing the tabletop version maybe once or twice. I got into it playing the digital version. And I think the digital version is great because it, uh, it, it easily tracks the amount of resources that you have every turn. Um, it just, it, the, the visual aspect of, of calculating the resources at any given time and showing you a single number on the screen for those resources is really helpful. Um, the other thing that it does really, really well is scoring. Uh, someone mentioned this on my F Facebook Livecast last week. Uh, scoring in Star Realms is a little fiddly, at least the way it comes out of the box with the cards that you have to use. We usually use counters from a different game uh, to keep track of scoring, but it's really nice for an app to calculate scoring for you. This uh, idea came up a few times, and I might mention it with other games too, where having an app calculate the score at the end of the game even, instead of just on an ongoing basis throughout the game, can relieve uh, some, some mental overhead from players, especially in games where the scoring can take a while. So that's Star Realms, a game that I genuinely do enjoy on the tabletop, but um, I really enjoy the, ta the digital version as well. Here's a big one, because I've this is one that I've only played digitally, I, and it has prompted me to buy the tabletop version because I love it so much. And I'm very curious to see if I prefer one over the other, but uh, this is Shards of Infinity. 
I've really, really enjoyed this uh, two-player dueling game playing against the AI on the digital app. I played it a lot recently. I'm loving it. Um, and again, kind of like Star Realms, because it's, it's, it's very similar to Star Realms, uh, another deck building game. It is. Uh, it shows you the amount of resources that you have at, at any given time. Um, it has a great tutorial. The tutorial was really, really great. It, the game is broken down into phases. They're, they're very streamlined phases, but I like uh, digital apps that manage phases for you so you don't have to manage it for, for all the players at the table. Um, it even has some reminders. There were times where I uh, should have been um, using some of my, my, uh, my attack against champions that the opponent had in play in Shards of Infinity. And I kind of went to end my turn and just hit the opponent because uh, you're trying to reduce the opponent's health down to zero. And the app prompted me and said, hey, are you sure you want to do that? You could actually take out one of these champions right now. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot that I could do that. Um, there's also something you can do every turn where you can you can boost your mastery uh, once per turn. And the app reminds you of uh, that you can do that as well if you have an available resource to do so. So all those things add up to, to a really, really positive digital experience for Shards of Infinity. I'm hoping the tabletop version is still very good, um, but it seems to just work so well in app form. The next one uh, is Lords of Waterdeep, a game that I really, again, I love playing Lords of Waterdeep on the tabletop. Uh, but it does one, the app does one thing in particular that I really, really like, and this is um, it shows you very quickly and easily the resources that all of your opponents have gathered. And this is really important in Lords of Waterdeep because you are constantly looking at the quests that are available, the face-up quest, to see what you can accomplish um, or will soon be able to accomplish versus your opponents. And so I thought I wanted to, I wanted to highlight this game in particular, the digital version of the game, because it, um, it, it, may, it increases the visibility of what opponents can do and opponents' potential at any given time which uh, the tabletop game, you can do that. You can look around at your opponents and see what resources they have, but to have it all in one simple place on the app just makes it really, really nice and streamlined. So I, I wanted to highlight that aspect of Lord, Lords of Waterdeep. This is generally a game that I think I'd rather play on the tabletop, but it is probably my also one of my most played apps for that reason, and just because I love the game. I love being, being able to play it quickly um, rather than over an hour and a half. Uh, and that's another thing I want to mention about a couple of these games. They are simply faster on the app. And so sometimes I just want to burn through a game. I want to have all the, the, the creativity and strategy that goes into the game, all the problem solving that goes into playing a game, but I don't necessarily want to play it for an hour and a half. So I love the speed of Lords of Waterdeep, the Lords of Waterdeep app. Suburbia is one that I've played the tabletop game, haven't played the digital version, but um, some people pointed out that it's a really good game at calculating uh, your upkeep, it's taking care of upkeep for you. Because Suburbia is a game where you earn your income uh, every every turn. It's not there's isn't like in uh, rounds that you play where every once in a while you gain income. You're gaining it every turn, and having an app take care of that, I can see that being really really helpful. Um, so I, that's why I put Suburbia on this list. Onitama is another one. It's a one player. It's a solo game where I've played the uh, tabletop version, but not the app version. And one of the things that people highlighted about this that I think applies to a number of these games is shuffling. And any game, especially these, these deck building games, Onitama, where you shuffle a lot um, and ha having an app handle that instead of you having to shuffle cards over and over again is awesome. That's really, really helpful. And a number of people said this about Onitama, that uh, having the app shuffle for you instead of you having to do it. Um, is, is a huge help, and I can totally see that. So that's why I wanted to put Onitama on this list. A cooperative game that I really, really enjoy is Sentinels of the Multiverse, but it is uh, very fiddly to play on the tabletop. There are a lot of tokens, a lot of uh, information to manage, and not just for the character that you're controlling, but also the environment and the enemy, and a lot of triggers to keep track of. So this... Uh, ties into many of the things that I've already said, like keeping track of tri uh, triggers, uh, reducing fiddliness, and, uh, having an AI managed so you don't have to manage it. Um, all those things go into having a really, really, po I've had a really, really positive experience with the Sentinels on, on the Multiverse app. And I've also had a very positive experience on the tabletop, but generally that is usually when I have someone who is very talented at, um, at running the game so I can just focus on my character, which is what I want to do. I don't want to focus on running the environment or the villain. I just want to focus on my character and on the teamwork, teamwork elements of the game. So uh, I think the app does that really well. So that's Sentinels of the Multiverse. 
Another one that I played the tabletop version of, um, but not the digital version, is Through the Ages. But I can totally see how the app version of Through the Ages does a really good job of managing that fiddliness, managing your resources throughout the game. Uh, in the tabletop version, it's, it's very fiddly to manage your resources. You can play the app version much faster than you can the, the tabletop version. And the rules. I haven't played Through the Ages digital, but um, people said that the, the tutorial and uh, how the game teaches you how to play is awesome in the digital game. And I think that's particularly important in these, these heavier games where, uh, where there can be a pretty big barrier to entry in the tabletop version. But if the digital version has a great rule book that completely lowers and removes that barrier to entry and can eventually potentially increase, increase sales of the tabletop version as well. Um, so I, I applaud Through the Ages for having an excellent tutorial and rulebook in the digital version. Um, uh, one of my friends, Henry, mentioned uh, Indian Summer as a, a game. I've only played the tabletop version of this. Uh, Indian Summer, he, very specific mention, but I thought it was worth mentioning for the, the digital version. In the tabletop version, it can be a fiddly and all, uh, all difficult at times, like in terms of dex dexterous and dexterity, to pick up tokens uh, to put tokens over like the holes and then pick them up out of those holes because uh, they're, they're uh, polyamino shapes that have holes in them in this game and having an app manage something that is like uh, in terms of dexterity, fiddly in terms of dexterity, I hadn't thought about it in, that in terms of digital games but I think Henry's totally right. I can see how Indian Summer, the digital version, could manage that, uh, that tactile fiddliness um, over, over the tabletop version. Uh, Twilight Struggle came up as well uh, from people who, I, again, I played this only on the tabletop, not the digital version. I think it falls kind of into that through the ages category that it can manage a lot of information at one time um, for you. The app can do that for you. Uh, that, that's the big thing I think for, for that I think of when I think of Twilight Struggle and through the ages. I think of a lot of things that you have to remember um, throughout the game. And I love an app that can manage that information for me. Raiders of the North Sea is a very beautiful game on the tabletop, um, great components. Um, but this is, this is a category that I haven't talked about yet, setup and cleanup. Um, this game does require quite a bit of setup because you're putting worker, you're, you're uh, spawning workers on the board, seeding the board with workers at the beginning of the game. And then you got to clean all that up at the end of the game. And a digital game, a uh, full AI digital game, can manage all that setup and cleanup for you. And so uh, I can, even though I haven't played the digital app for Raiders of the North Sea, I can totally see that that would, that, that it would solve that problem of setup. Um, yeah, I think that's, that, that applies to a bunch of these games. Carcassonne is one that I played vo both versions. Here we are, one of the, we're getting to a few games that I played both, both the tabletop and the digital version, and Carcassonne is certainly one of them. I, I love the tabletop version, but... Uh, the digital version does something that I really, really enjoy, which is whenever you have a new tile to place, it shows you all of the eligible places where you can place it. It's not pointing you in any one direction, or it's not uh, leading you in any, any direction. It's just saying, okay, these are your available options. Focus on these. And usually there's still a lot of them. But I love that the app can do that, uh, whereas the, the tabletop game can't really do that. You have to, you have to scan the, the tabletop surface and figure out what your eligible moves are, which is fine. But the app is really, really nice. If you haven't played this, this digital app, it, it does that really, really well. So Carcassonne, the digital version, I think I honestly would lean slightly towards the digital version over the tabletop version because it shows you your, your options every turn. Dead Man's Draw is a game that I've played solely digitally. I haven't played the tabletop version. Um, and it, it is one of my most played apps. And it does some awesome things. It's, it's a push or luck game um, with, with cards. And the tutorial in it is fantastic. It plays almost like a campaign where it starts off very simply and it unravels rules as you play the game, as you beat the game from round to round in a very satisfying way. And so I love this idea of digital games, um, how they can, not just in terms of tutorials, but they can add, uh, uh, they can unravel and unveil the rules in a way that feels like you are playing through a campaign, essentially. Um, I, it's possible the tabletop game does this, but the app does it so well that I, that I doubt the tabletop version does it nearly as well. There's this really nice sense of progression from game to game in the, in the digital version. So uh, Dead Man's Draw, I highly recommend it if you like push your luck games in, in the digital format. Jaipur is a two-player game. 
Um, and this is one that, that I haven't, I played the tip of the version, not the digital version. Someone mentioned that it does a really great job at offering, um, it's one of these two things. I may, I may have this me messed up, but it, it either offers a campaign or it offers weekly challenges. And I love that idea, whether or not Jaipur is actually the correct game for this. Um, but I love the idea of digital games offering ongoing challenges to players. Like, hey, you know, if you play it today, uh, this is the this is the thing that you're trying to achieve. This is something. This is a new twist that you can uh, pursue. And I love that idea that the digital game can keep players coming back to it for um, for app driven variety. I think that's really really great that apps can do that. Granted, games can can do that. In, in size, for example, we have this achievement sheet that doesn't mean anything in terms of gameplay, but it feels good to write your name down on a slot that says you know that you won the game without having any mechs. Um, that, that's very difficult to do inside. And so having an app prompt you with those things can be very satisfying, whereas you may not even think about it. Like in your copy of Side, that achievement sheet might be in the bottom of your box right now. You might not even think about it. But the app can, can remind you of it. And there is a great Side app that, uh, that does things like that. Um, speaking of which, Charterstone. I wanted to put Charterstone on this list. It is, it is a game that I designed and published. But uh, the digital version recently came out. And I wanted to highlight one thing in particular about it that I think it does, which is uh, Charterstone is a game about building, your, uh, building a village uh, with other players. It's a competitive game, but you're, together you are building a village. And the app uh, has little animations that bring the village to life in a way that a tabletop game can't. A tabletop, tabletop game is static. You, can't, you don't have little animations, little people moving around. Uh, little wheels turning and I think there is a happy medium of this you might even watch this right now and be like I'm really annoyed by animations and tabletop games I just want it to be perfectly still so I can focus on um, on mechanics basically I totally appreciate that that was something that they worked on quite a bit in the Charterstone app though they originally had wheels that were turning too fast or animations that were turning over too quickly they toned it down a lot for the final version so that they're very subtle but you do get this very, uh, the village has a very lifelike feeling to it. You feel like it is really um, active and alive as you're playing. And I think that element of animations in these games uh, really, really can elevate them. Not too high over the tabletop version, but enough that I think it's worth checking out the tabletop, the digital version of games like Charterstone. Last on the list is a game that I have played both versions of, and that is Small World. Um, Small World is one that I think it can be played much faster in the digital version than the tabletop version. I think that's a huge asset. And actually, one of the things that people mentioned, this is the, the highlight of this one, is analysis paralysis. I think Small World, great game, but I think it's one of those games that it can lead to players having quite a bit of analysis paralysis and having a, a game that can really help you focus um, or even that you can just play against the AI so you don't have to worry about another human player. In Small World, it's probably a game that I would rather play against the AI because I don't have to worry about the AI having analysis paralysis rather than playing against a human player. So I think that's a that's a valid reason for some of these for some of these digital implementations of games. If you encounter a lot of analysis paralysis for certain games in your group, why not get the digital version so you don't have to worry about that sometimes, but you can still enjoy um, playing the game. Now I wanted to end this video um, with some reasons that. I, I don't think that digital versions will ever overtake the tabletop versions, that I, that I will always generally prefer the tabletop version. Um, one is the idea of playing with people and seeing people around the table in person in real life. That's something I'm really missing right now in this time of the coronavirus crisis, but uh, it, it's so crucial. It's so important to me to be able to play with other people. Uh, that's a huge part of my gaming experience. Um, there's also the, the tactility. One of the reasons I play tabletop games is because I love to look at the components. I love to touch them. I love to pick them up. I like to feel the textures, the weight of tokens. Um, that, is, that is so important to my tabletop experience. Digital games can't, uh, can't uh, evoke those same feelings. Um, undo buttons. This is a big thing. Some of these t digital versions have undo buttons. I'm glad they do. Some of them don't. And this is actually one of the, the main things I've encountered in Shards of Infinity, the, the only real thing that, that is annoying about it, is that every once in a while I, I make a play and the opponent, it's not the opponent's turn yet. I've done something on my turn. Maybe I've even just uh, put a card into play when I wish it could have remained in my hand. But you can't undo it. Or I'm missing the undo button. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. But I love in tabletop versions, if you're playing with friendly people, you can say, oh, shoot, I didn't, I didn't mean to actually play that yet. I haven't affected the game state at all. Um, can I undo that? And in real life, people say yes. Of course, you can undo that. Um, but the apps 
<laughs> you know, it's an app. It's not, if it doesn't have an undo button, you're not gonna be able to undo it. Um, I had a note here about visibility of key info. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's another, the last thing is, while digital versions can do a great job of consolidating information, like I mentioned for Lords of Waterdeep, at the same time, sometimes uh, it is just a lot easier to scan the table to see what opponents have or what they're doing, what they're plotting, what they're planning. Uh, whereas on a digital version, you are relegated to a much smaller plane surface than the, than the tabletop version. And so your, your information is limited, it's consolidated, it's concise, and you may not be able to see everything that you need to know at any given time. Um, so in that way, I think tabletop games do, uh, are generally more enjoyable for me uh, if I'm trying to pay attention to other players th than their, uh, their digital implementations. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Obviously, this is a little bit of a weird list given that I have not played all these games digitally um, and some of them I haven't played on the tabletop. But um, I would love to hear your thoughts about games that you would much rather play digitally than on the tabletop. Um, and don't say it in a negative way. We're not trying to, I'm not, definitely not trying to bash the tabletop versions of games here. This is my, I, I love tabletop games. This is my career and my industry and my community. Um, but if there is a digital game that you highly recommend because you think it just, you just prefer that experience over the tabletop version, feel free to mention that in the comments. Or if, like at the end of my video, if you have any things, uh, any reasons that uh, you would rather play tabletop games, if you think they're doing, they, tabletop games are doing things that digital games can never do, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments as well. Thanks.